So let's look into uh, persisting RDD. So far we have seen how to create RDD. Now we will actually see how to persist RDD. So let's first understand the concepts. And more importantly, when you actually uh, give the certification exam, especially Hortonworks or Cloudera certification exams, you can actually uh, see uh, the documentation either as bookmarks in the browser. I opened the browser. Uh, somewhere here, uh, the documentation will be either bookmarked or they, can, they might provide you um, HTML files in a folder. Uh, where the entire documentation uh, uh, or official documentation of Spark uh, will be provided to you. So you should be able to use that as and when it is required. It will look like this. Um, if, you, if you are practicing or learning, you always search for Spark programming guide uh, 1.6.x. I am using 1.6.2. You can use any version of 1.6. And uh, you can go here. And uh, we are actually talking about RDD persistence. Okay, and you can click on this material to see what persistence is and what all options that are available. So typically, if you just create RDD the way I have shown earlier. So here, let me launch the PySpark session. So PySpark is being launched. Then I will show. Uh, how a typical uh, RDDs are created and uh, how we can add persistence to it and we will see the difference as well. So we have already seen if you want to create RDD from a file which is in HDFS, you just say orders uh, which is nothing but variable name equal to sc dot text file and here you give the path which is nothing but uh, HDFS path public retail underscore db orders and hit enter. Now, orders, uh, when we run this command, it will not be executed immediately. It will create something called DAG, and I will cover a bit later. When we perform these operations, such as orders.first or count, these are actions, count first, etc. When we actually perform these kind of uh, actions, such as count first, etc., the DAG which is created thus far will be executed. Okay, if you do not persist RDD by using the concept of persistence, every time uh, the job is executed after the action such as count, uh, first save, save as text file, etc., the RDD might flush out of memory at any point in time. It will not uh, It will not. It will not stay in memory once the data is processed as part of the uh, task. Okay. Uh, but for any reason, if you want to persist RDD beyond the scope of an individual job, then you have to use the concept of persistence. Okay, and the way it will work is first you have to import a class called storage level, and that is part of PySpark package. Okay, storage level is the package which have these uh, storage levels defined as enums. You, if you just say after creating a RDD like this, if you say orders dot persist or cache, there are two APIs, persist or cache. Both are all, um, almost same, not much difference, um, and also even. Um, uh yeah even um, uh, yeah so the difference is persist with persist you can use any of these storage levels memory only memory and disk memory only serialized memory and disk serialized disk only etc and from these names it is obvious what they are meant for and the cache it's nothing but persist of memory only instead of saying rdd dot persist of a storage level dot memory underscore only like this instead of doing uh, like this you can also say orders dot cache so both are same okay as we have actually 
persisted with this command it is complaining um, uh, so actually i can say orders dot unpersist okay now i can say cache and it is cached okay so per persist of storage level dot memory only or cache means same okay so if you want to unpersist you can use the method unpersist uh, whatever uh, persistence uh, uh, method you want uh, or if as part of the certification they ask you to persist rdd for whatever reason this is how you you persist or cache okay and the major difference between persisted rdd and and non persisted rdd is um, as part of the session once the jobs are executed um, if you do not persist the rdd will be flushed out of memory and when you try to do uh, another operation which which uses the same rdd again spark has to do do the io go to the file system get the data divide into partitions and then when the tasks are executed those partitions will be processed so if you if you need to avoid this uh, warhead of uh, reading rdd multiple times if you are trying to use the same rdd as part of multiple jobs within the same session you can use persist mechanism and it can improve the performance okay so this is about rdd per, uh, persistence there are two aps cache or persist and uh, if you try to use persist you should be able to uh, in, uh, use the storage different storage levels which are nothing but uh, um, uh, enums in storage level uh, class such as memory only memory and disk etc and if you if you have to use any of these storage levels you have to first import uh, storage level uh, class from pyspark okay so this is how you can actually leverage the persistence for performance reasons in some of the certification exams they might explicitly ask you to persist rdd if they evaluate the code um, and if they ask you to persist you have to use that hdp cd spark is such certification where they they evaluate code whereas in cloudera you don't need to worry too much about these things uh, for cloudera certifications uh, they don't evaluate the code they only look into the results so you can safely um, ignore or uh, you don't need to give that much importance when it comes to cloudera certifications regarding persistence but for hardwork certification you you should be able to figure out how to uh, persist an rdd with the storage level they have asked as part of the exam 